This is Air Steven. We're on the road with Folk and Beyond at Amanda's Old Room one more time as things are looking sparser and sparser in the <laughs> Carreri Sprawl household as the home will soon become a house again as the impending journey to Berlin is upon us. Thanks so much for having me over, Paul and Devin. Oh, thanks for coming back over here. It's always fun. <laughs> and uh, what was the name of that tune you started us off with? That was uh, Little Glass of Wine by Jesse Winchester, um, who we've heard has been recently having some health problems, actually. Um, I think he has esophageal cancer. And um, so I haven't heard any more than that. Um, but we certainly wanted to play it. He's been, uh, it's been lovely having him in town these past few years, and he's becoming a friend. And um, 
And uh, on a less serious note, um, before we began, um, we, we, I've managed to spill two full glasses yeah, of wine. Not so here. <laughs> yeah, not so little glasses of wine, trying to fit us all into this little studio, <laughs> moving microphones around. So anyway, it smells great in here now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're sure going to miss having Paul Carreri and Devin Sproul in Charlottesville. And, and I know that as you are Craigslisting and... And uh, recycling, free cycling, <laughs> and recycling, and and getting uh, some of, yeah, <laughs> some of your uh, material plane. How does that feel? Getting rid of the a lot of the material plane that you've been attracting through the last twelve years since you've been in mm-hmm. Charlottesville. I think. Well, I keep joking that at the end of the month, I'm just going to say, "Just kidding," to Devin, <laughs> that this was all a ploy just to get rid of all of our crap. <laughs> You know, <laughs> and that we're not going anywhere. It's just now things feel a lot better. But uh, the process is kind of driving me crazy. But the um, the idea of it is like really attractive. Getting rid of stuff sure I'm, beats I'm a fire. Good. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Although, Although it's, it's a lot, fire work. is a lot less work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it it does feel good, man. We're 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 going to Berlin with uh, three guitars, two suitcases, and a cat. That's it. That's it. And so we'll be getting a furnished place when we get there because, you know, we can't, we can't bring a spatula and a can opener and an iron. So we'll do our best. Well, you've been here for some time, and, and we've, this is, I think, the fourth trip I've made over here, one for each of you and one for your friend Andy Friedman. Mm-hmm. And this will be our, our last hurrah, at least at this particular place. And it's yeah. always been a pleasure. One of the things that that strikes me as your impending move comes is, uh, how are you going to stay in touch with all of us in Charlottesville? <laughs> we have no plans to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I got I a think, Skype address. <laughs> I'm thinking, of, yeah, we got Skype certainly for family and stuff, and I, 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 I've been trying to decide between a blog. I was thinking like a, a secret. Facebook profile where we we actually would only be friends with our friends and not like a stupid music and mu- music marketing thing. You have to have um, an alias. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I don't know, man. Mm. Like I, I I don't really see us. Um, uh, naturally, it remains to be seen, but I don't really see us looking at this move as anything sort of permanent. You know, our plan is two years and. Uh, Ah. Two years, because if it's going crap after one year, well, then you say, well, it's only been a year. And if it's going well, then why would you leave? And so neither of us have ever been particularly goal-oriented folks, um, but we are trying to trying to be a little more goal-oriented with this and try and get back to the States in two years, hopefully, with enough money to buy a car and things like that. And I don't know, just to feel capable of moving home. But we'll see. I mean... Who knows? And maybe it'll be amazing. Maybe I'll be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're certainly still prolific. I know that uh, on my radio show when I played your newest single that I uh, pirated off of, this is I'm talking to Paul, uh, I pirated off of the YouTube that you made oh. on uh, Nothing's Changed on the Dance Floor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I likened you to what Neil Young does which is he has an album in the can and then all of a sudden he does something new and new trumps old. And that's what's happened to you now as, uh, I guess we can say it for, I don't know what we can say here. Uh, the big, the big rhymes oh, with yeah. Walter Mitty's last name. Yeah. <laughs> the big schmiffy. <laughs> but it rhymes with Walter Mitty. <laughs> I like that. We've been trying to deal with this. The big schmiffy. I, I, that might be it. <laughs> So you've got a new album in the can that is actually going to come out before Greenhorns. Yeah, unfortunately, the uh, the record I did for that um, documentary film about young farmers that got picked up for, by the Discovery Channel has gotten pushed back just for a variety of really boring, boring reasons. And um, so, yeah, um, this record, which I recorded coincidentally in Berlin um, with my English band back in January, uh, the big schmiffy, uh, the big shiggy. Um, <laughs> That, Just dedicated to Danny Schmidt. Oh yeah, the, the big, big Schmitty. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> the big Schmidthead. <laughs> yeah, so that's coming out in early August. I think. Uh, uh, I'm excuse me, early October. I think October fourth. 
And it'll come out in Europe. Will it come out in the United States about the same time? Um, I I hope so, man. I don't know. We're we're free cycling That's and Craigslisting and moving. That's yeah. the whole. Everything's lagging here, and um, and for a while we were really caring, and now it just feels like we've been commuting. We've been doing a long commute, um, going where the work is, and now it just feels like well. Yeah. May as well dive into where the work is and stop spending so much money. I mean, just last week, just last week, Devin went back to England for a single show, um, and she was there for eight days, and she just got home yesterday, and uh, that was her sixth flight to Europe this year, and you know that's that's seven grand easy, and so it it'd be nice when things are forty euros away. Those tickets all had return flights. They did. This one didn't. No. It was weird, man. When we, <laughs> you know, we only. It was only like three weeks ago that we actually bought our flights, and Devin was sitting on the floor beside me. Um, that's where I usually like her to sit when I'm on the computer <laughs> beside me on the floor. Um, Having feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and so we hit buy those tickets, and it was a one way flight. And I um, I reached down and I. Um, grabbed her head and and made her made her kiss me and uh but it was a weird moment and then i sent her off but it was it was deep <laughs> anyway let's do that again. this is a <laughs> this is the claw judge coming through oh here. sure um, oh yeah so so anyway no we just we just you know we just bought our plane tickets and it was strange to buy these one-way plane tickets you know Oh, sorry, um, I mean, laughing we just bought that. these plane tickets, and it was weird to buy these one-way plane tickets. Uh, and it was a kind of emotional moment for the two of us to like hover your hand above the mouse there for a millisecond and then press it. Mm-hmm. And then we just went on with our day. Mm-hmm. Well, you're really folk royalty and singer-songwriter royalty, and I don't know if that classifies you into... A, a place that you you don't want to be, and maybe that's not the right words for it as far as singer songwriter. But the royalty is true, since you guys have been in Charlottesville and we've watched your career take off, and more than that, just the spectacular growth that you both had musically. It's uh, really something that Charlottesville will miss, and and you've got a show coming up uh, that you'll do together, mm-hmm. and that's two uh, days from now, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And that's uh, going to be at the Jefferson Theater, and you're putting together a small band for that? Yeah, yeah, we're going to have a few guests, mostly a rhythm section. Um, um, yeah, we'll have Todd Wellens and um, Sam Wilson from Sons of Bill playing with us, along with our old great friend uh, Jonathan Mills playing bass. Mm-hmm. And then we'll have probably a few guests up, you know, that uh, have uh, played some special roles in our lives uh, throughout are living here, you know, because both of us really, 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 you're right. I mean, we, we've learned so much here, whether it be from like Danny Schmidt telling, you know, me noticing that he didn't play with a pick. And that's when I decided to not play with a pick and, or Jeff Romano, who has been so influential in me learning how to produce records for other folks. Um, and he's certainly, I think he's recorded four or five records for us. And there's just been absolutely so many people like I just, I, things were kind of, um, you know, when, when I moved here back in, in 2000, I mean, the king of my living room thing was just beginning and, uh, Brady Earnhardt and Jan Smith, Lance Brenner, Stratton Salidas, uh, uh, so many, and Browning, it, Browning and Porter Browning and Jeff. Jeff yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, I mean, it was incredible. It was like, uh, just sort of tripping on a piece of sidewalk and falling into all your best friends. And mm. it was just great. And uh, we learned so much and mm-hmm. it was great. And of course, Dev began here long before I got here. You know, she busking on the downtown mall when she was like 15 years old. So. I think I, Paul's moved around quite a bit um, in his slightly longer life, and uh, and I haven't at all, barely. I just came from Louisa County, uh, pretty much, and um, I think I think I'm totally nonchalant because I'm like, yeah, I travel all over the place, whatever. It's gonna be easy. But I think I'm feeling that way now and then once I'm actually there and not coming back it might be a little bit of what kind of visas did you have to get to be able to do this and stay for two years the reason that Berlin has so many artists is because they're really laid back about it um and we do have to get a residence yeah but it's weird we have to get it once we get there we have to have two blank pay oh we have to get um don't let me forget uh, photos, pass, new passport photos. Why? 
I don't know, because the internet says. <laughs> we got a microchip in our cat. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and our cat is severely limiting our housing options. And Yeah, we had a great Skype with a girl today. She was like, you guys seem great. And, and then we know, said, oh, one last thing. She's like, so you're not bringing anything, right? Just, you know, no, no, uh, you know, you should talk about how she has two, two beds and we can use one of them, blah, blah, blah. And we're like, the only thing we're bringing is a cat. <laughs> and then and she, she was like, like, oh, my couch is leather. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, so. Cat is getting less cute every minute. <laughs> <laughs> disposable kitties. It's hard to be disposable when you're a kitty. Mm. Oh, it's hard, man. It really is hard. And I mean, I don't mean to go on about a cat, um, but, you know, Devin had a friend who passed away um, about a year and a half ago or so. Mm -hmm. And her new record, I Love You Go Easy, um, a lot of that has, it. I don't know, I'll, a lot of that record um, sort of has to do with um, Danielle's sickness and her passing. And Danielle, thankfully slash unthankfully, collected cats. I mean, I say thankfully because like she could have collected iguanas or something like that. But then some sort of uh, ghost came down and um, slapped Devin in the forehead and said that it was our responsibility to take one of these cats. Well, I also got an email that said there's one left and nobody wants it. Okay, well, yeah, it was a very ghostly email. Though. <laughs> is that Sorry, the cat that is that the cat that made it that's onto your? That's the cat on the back. That's the cat on yep. the back of New her CD. record. And so, so, Clover so we feel a certain cool. responsibility to the cat, especially as we've now kind of fallen in love with her. So, is there a song about the cat? Not yet. She's really, really um, underrepresented as far as our family's pets I think are concerned. It's in song, just the cats in the dark yard. Oh, the cats in the dark yard. Well, Devin, do you want to play us a song? Sure, I'll play the, the, the cats in the... <laughs> okay. Whoa. Um, the song is called The Warning Bell, and it was sort of a, a reply or a chapter two to a song in Rise Up Singing. It's a wonderful songbook. Um, called Hang On to the Bell, Nelly. And in Hang On to the Bell, Nelly, um, Nelly in order to prevent her boyfriend from being executed at the ringing of the warning, or no, at the curf curfew bell, um, she ties herself to the clapper, the tongue of the bell, and so, you know, it doesn't make a sound when it rings. And so this song, The Warning Bell of Mine, is um, about untying your yourself and letting it ring. <clears throat> I work a while in music till my money runs out I don't mind the driving, and I like the crowd. On the nights, the guitar feels right, and I ain't sick of the songs. It's a pretty good job. It's a pretty good job. I know you know what I'm saying, honey, I know you do. It's good to have someone who knows to come home to. But it should be someone who knows when to let live and when to be discreet and when to start letting the warning bell ring and climb down the ladder, untie my middle from the clapper, letting the warning bell ring. I've been waking up early to the tune of the neighborhood rooster. The cat's in the dark yard hunting birds and Pretty much all the leaves on the mulberry tree Came down overnight But she's still blending in all right She's still blending in Out of reach, out on the street You can see up to Monticello there's a brown bird under a metal cylinder at the top of a telephone pole Like a kid in the guts of a parking garage Lunging up a saxophone I'm a bird with a big mouth A big mouth and a microphone Climb down the ladder Unhitch my middle from the clapper 
Letting the warning bell ring, ring, ring. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I took the triumph to Keith's tonight to celebrate the cooling off it's like driving the outboard at Tromblon out in the lake in the middle of the night just you and the yodeling loon there's something about moving fast mm, and looking straight up at the moon all right I know I've been a bit of a broken record darling as of late I know I grind my axe in the morning and I pick my bone at night Sometimes it's you I'm picking on Sometimes I think I'm saving your life I like to think that you do like for me Climb down the ladder Untie yourself from the clapper Letting the warning bell ring Letting the warning bell ring I will go while the music Till my money runs out And I sure like the driving I sure like the crowd On the nights the guitar feels right I ain't sick of songs It's a pretty good job mm, It's a pretty good job All right, the warning <laughs> bell. Devin Sproul here at Amanda, Amanda's Old Room, Air Stephen, Folk and Beyond on the Road is where we're at right now. I Love You Go Easy is the name of the new CD that'll, that uh, still doesn't have a release date for the United States, but you can actually still get it in Europe. Yeah, yeah, you can you can find it or a lot about it, um, and I think it was <laughs> slated for the end of the year. <laughs> Well, there's Amazon UK, right? You can find anything out there. Yeah, it's oh, true. Yeah, you can certainly buy it off of uh, tinangelrecords.co.uk. Yeah, 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 for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, um, that's Monk on the cover, um, Jumping Monk. Oh, the recording, um, the recording was done in Toronto. I, um, I have some relatives up there. I was born up there, and... But I didn't really live there, but I've been sort of going back a little bit more and um, s sort of making the most of the, the dual citizenship, the extra passport. And um, I recorded with a producer named Sandro Perry, who's, um, who I actually met through the English Connections, through Rich, our manager and label guy over there. And, um, and, and then this band called The Silt, who are three piece and they play um, a lot of instruments including trombone and analog synthesizer and guitar and bass and drums sometimes bass and drums at the same time same guy um, and and um, it was I did it by myself like I just went up there and um, I had had Paul really really helping me a lot with the last and he actually ended up helping me with the post production on this record a lot but um, it was very uh, nerve-wracking, and just I hadn't done something like that, working with people I'd never met, and just, um, it was really great. None of them had any, ever heard any of my music, I don't think. They just heard the songs, the demos that I wrote for this record, so I got to sh shed all of the... Um, yeah, just, or like the, like, mom, you know, like... Uh, um, like I always, this song, Old Virginia Block, always pops into my mind when I'm talking about this... Virginia folky thing and and um it's been such a not just like the way that my music sounded in in the past and kind of up until this record but it's been kind of how it's been like this character of dev from Virginia you know and then going over to England where they think Virginia is even more of an a exotic kind of mountain you know crazy country whatever thing and um so this was like dev from Canada like playing with these crazy minimalist hippies <laughs> um yeah it was it was it was um and and the record is like well it it it, it explores loss and strife and uh, in some ways and so it kind of corresponded a little bit with like chapter three of 
of marriage and of, you know, losing friends or, you know, um, kind of the... Can you have tri-citizenships? I, I can't, I don't see why not. I'm, I'm yeah, I suppose. Sometimes they, they don't let you. Put in your you never time. know when a, when a relative's going to come out of the woodwork and say, you know, <laughs> Well, I mean, uh-huh. be German. Well, don't Depending upon think how long you I might didn't, stay. it didn't cross my mind that if we were ever going to have a baby, it would be so cool to have a baby in another country. I loved having been born in another country, but Germany's pretty... Um, we're talking babies? Well, we're talking citizenship. We're talking about we're talking about um, you making know how the it goes, most. Of, you get a cat, and then you have a kid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no. I but it did get me looking into the um, the the thing. The, the in Germany, it's all oh, it's kind of it's kind of messed up. Like the, the, their their immigration thing is like it's pretty interesting. They're they're what. It's rough. I mean, I don't know about it. there's a lot of Turkish people and they're like, they have no, there's no being born there. There's no oh, moving yeah, there. Yeah, it's yeah, all yeah, about yeah, your yeah. blood. Uh, like, oh, and right. it's very, it's like, it dates back to when well, it should. My mom, Gretchen Hochmeyer and her aunt, Wilhelmina Hochmeyer, those things don't get us any leverage. Um, actually, we would probably have a better chance of becoming German because of the Hochmeyers than a Turkish person who was born in Germany and who, you know, who has lived there their whole life. Well, that's all I care about. High five, dog. <laughs> <laughs> How about um, you, Paul? Do you have a new song me, for us? Don't quote me, but this is the impression I'm getting. Yeah, uh, yeah man. So this is off the, uh, the big Schmitty. Yeah. 
those are some of the lyrics. <laughs> Hard working. <laughs> yeah, not holding anything back. It's like there was 10,000 people out there yeah. watching. Aren't there? <laughs> there will be if there aren't now. This is Air Steven with Paul Carreri and Devin Sproul at Amanda's Old Room as Folk and Beyond has gone on the road one last time to Amanda's Old Room. And uh, we're, we're talking about the new music and the impending move to Europe and the... And this goodbye to Charlottesville. I'm going to start crying. Does it b- freak you out to hear people talk about it? So... Um... Like you're dying? So actually... <laughs> what do you mean? Well, it's been so official with our family and friends for like a while, a few months. And to me, it sounds weird when when it is, sounds official with... Mm. On the, I don't know. I don't know. We were, we were so afraid to stuff. tell our parents. And, um, and we told them and pretty much unanimously, they all said... Oh, that's great. We were wondering why you haven't done that in like three years ago. <laughs> it's about time you got out. Yeah. I yeah. <laughs> thought you turned uh, out to old people. Weird? No, not really. I mean, I'm sad about it. Um, I guess I, I feel nice that other people are sad about it. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Devin d- came back with this idea um, and it just seemed laughable to me at the time. And slowly but surely, it sort of evolved into us actually doing it. Well, I think I can bring this up because you have talked about it in a lot of the performances that I've seen you do recently. And that's your therapy sessions. You're you're, you're in treatment. Uh Uh-huh. And you talk about it. um, And I was kind of wondering how that has worked out as far as a relationship goes and, and what you've learned from that and perhaps how it has affected... Uh, from Devin's standpoint, even from Finally, Devin's perspective of watching what's going on, I get and then to know. then how something uh, have you seen? You know, Paul just talked about that that uh, then the you, the person that goes out and travels and they come back and nothing's they're on the dance yeah, floor and yeah, nothing yeah. has changed. Well, Paul's been in treatment. Has anything changed? I thought about it today because we were we were trying to make this Skype call um, uh, to to one of the people and he looks uh, in, nervous now, in <laughs> Berlin and um and and I remembered how to say do you understand English or can you verstehen Sie verstehen Sie English can you understand English and Paul was like well at first he made fun of me which he always does and he's like yeah says it wrong on purpose and then and I correct him before I realize that he's making fun of me and then oh <laughs> but then he like really tried it and like and I think that that was Susan's influence right Dr. Susan Susan, Susan Cunningham <laughs> I'm actually not sure she's the doctor but uh yeah she's been great yeah I mean do I have I noticed anything else uh, um uh, maybe maybe in your communication with your parents, or maybe it's just that your dad's paying for it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I think everybody would like to be in some sort of treatment in that sense. Just a lot of us look at it like, I don't know that I can spend $150 an hour to talk to somebody. You know what's weird is in England, where we spend a lot of our time when we're not here, um, it's a really... It's not a very accepted thing. People, if people go in, if people have a counselor or therapist or psychiatrist, something's really wrong, and they worry about people that are. And, and it's like, it's, well, I think there are certain parts of the country and certain factions of folks who believe well, that here. Oh God, yeah, yeah. And I guess a lot of it has to do with the people that we hang out with over there don't don't have a lot of money either. So right. it's so it's, you know, it's not as accessible, and maybe it's more. Um, more acceptable socially when you have money to afford lots of money. Well, I've wanted to cancel every single session. I mean, <laughs> literally, like, just can be, I have to drag myself out the door, you, you know, to go. But, like, it's a commitment that I've made, and I'm pretty good at holding up on commitments mm-hmm. if I've made them. And then you always And I almost say always really good feel things. good afterwards. I, I, I've been exhausted. Um, but... Um, I mean, one session was all about what it was all about, about how I wanted to not go every time, you know. And, and to a certain extent, you know, I, I, I don't know. If I... Oh, no, I shouldn't say that. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. 
it's been great to feel really, really challenged by someone. And, you know, I basically just um, absolutely rolled the dice as far as who I got. I went with this woman, Susan Cunningham, because I think she won some sort of like best therapist award in Seville. And, uh, and we had to meet in the back of a church, which I wasn't initially um, a thousand percent sold on. Um, but she, but that, th- th- those kind of issues have never come up, and um, and she has a great sense of humor, and uh, she uh, is really challenging, and uh, never lets me off the hook easily, and uh, it's, it, I, I don't know what to say. I, 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 I wish that, um, I guess I wish that we could be really good friends, but I, I'm not sure that that's possible, especially with us moving. She might her to the show. I'd like to meet her. Um, that's can really you Skype? Kind of, it's really kind of personal, Devin. <laughs> <laughs> can you Skype and continue it, or is it you know, something that's that funny. you plan you on continuing? You brought that up there because my dad has been very concerned, hoping that I can find a therapist overseas, and um, and he's. But unfortunately, um, this person can't really help with that because she, you know, strangely, she doesn't really know any therapists in Berlin. Um, yeah, okay. it, you know, she's really lacking in that regard. We <laughs> talked about Lisa Kudrow in. Yeah. Jennifer Aniston earlier, uh. just briefly, and, and uh, Lisa Kudrow actually As we has always a, do. a new... Because <laughs> they're friends. Uh, um, Lisa Kudrow actually has a new TV show, and it's on Showtime, and it's called Web Therapy, where she does three-minute sessions only, because to get rid of all the feelings and all those sensitive stuff and just get right oh, down man. to business, and uh, it's a pretty hilarious show, actually. Huh. Yeah. That sounds good. And it was my father who recently <laughs> said, well, if you like her so much and you think she's doing a good job, why don't you try and set up weekly Skype sessions? And I had never thought about you that. You should ask her. I will. There's um, the word think itself. Think how good I'm going to be. Think how healthy and well. If you put a space in between the E and the R in therapist, you've got the rapist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that Wait. means something. Well, it could be a song. But probably there. not. So, so, so it's interesting that a therapist could could basically take learn everything about you from your songs, perhaps. <laughs> Do you know what Keith said when he was talking about air last night? He said, "You just got to embrace the crazy." <laughs> Speaking of crazy, yeah, not me. <laughs> I mean everything I say. I mean that's like saying point. that like you can rearrange Santa to get Satan and. and <laughs> Well, I always thought it was a bit of a mental rape in a certain sense. I, when I well, look, man, I was dressed like I wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> and we saw him on the dance floor, and nothing had changed. You see, he's still cracking those jokes. He's still diverting everything into comedy. <laughs> it is his way. <laughs> well, it's been a lot of fun. I don't know. Do you want? To, we can have. Do we have anything else to talk about? I don't know, man. We. I just like to thank you personally. You know, like you were. I was telling somebody just last night that, um, you know, you were the first person that ever played my music on the radio, and I had to pull over the damn car. You know, I couldn't believe it. And it was a song of mine. Uh, we've talked about it before. I think it was a song, an old song of mine called "Comes a Time." And then you played Neil Young's song, which is also called "Comes a Time." And man, I thought I had hit the lottery and just couldn't believe that that I had moved to this town where there would be somebody in it that was that supportive of our stuff and my stuff. And um, it's just, it's just, and you've been fantastic. Like, and the show has been great. And um, I don't like the Zydeco music. I'm just gonna say it because um, <laughs> to me it sounds you won't like be seeing Terrence Simeon next year. It just sounds like you didn't see it sounds Simeon. like people are singing recipes. <laughs> They're like, okay, you're going to put the black beans in at 4.50. You're going to leave them for 16 minutes. Now you can put the cabbage in and stir it like your mama told you to. And I'm like, you know what? Can we get back to folk and beyond, for God's sake? <laughs> well, we have tended to go back to folk and beyond. Sometimes, Yay. sometimes I was thinking about making it kneel and beyond. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but not really. But yeah. somebody's got to do the programming. And I'll tell you, when I first heard you in 1999 come into the Prism Coffee House, when I was hosting the uh, acoustic open showcase, we called it, and you hear a lot of songs and you hear a lot of stuff of people struggling. And some of them, you, 
you know, God bless them. Some of them, they just aren't ready. But it's all part of getting out there and getting your songs out there is to go do it and to have the courage to do it. And it's important to be supportive. But there was one guy, and that was you, that came in and it just took my breath away, blew me away. It had nothing to do with being supportive because if you sucked, you wouldn't have got the airplay. <laughs> Well, I, I, it, I, as, I, from my own personal, uh, from my own personal thanks, I feel like I kind of earned it with you because yeah. I, I think, I think for a lot of years, I, I, oh, we don't need to go into this. Well, but, it's true. The early songs that I heard you do, I was not impressed. And I am, well. Yeah, and I mean, God, I mean, she was like 17. She should have had her act together at that point. I mean, point. really. Hey, guess what? <laughs> At the show on Saturday, I'm gonna be breaking out those records and selling them for five bucks. We're gonna five because I still have. <laughs> anyway, two for four. Because <laughs> I still have some. Believe it or not, they don't. Sl- they, and nothing's sliding off the shelves anymore. That they're, they're not even allowed to. I don't even sell them anymore. But. I have enough, and I'm broke enough that, um, yeah. Cool, man. We could relive the, the, the glory days. Um, but what I meant to say is that I'm, uh, it's, it's like with Matt Carreri. We, like, his music was good for your brother, for being our brother for a long time, and then it got good for being anyone. And then we told him that we liked it, and it felt so good to tell somebody you liked their music when you actually meant it. And I really appreciate your support of my music. Um, well, your growth really has been spectacular. It. Both of you are, you are are royalty of Charlottesville that will be dearly missed, and it's been a real pleasure. and And the relationship isn't over because I can get a plane ticket too. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll. Yeah. Well, you can come I sleep can... on our leather couch that yeah. our well, as long as you don't scratch it. I'm going to grow my fingernails <laughs> really long. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Sarah. All right. Hope this, to see you Saturday at the Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget Saturday at the Jefferson Theater. Is there a special name for the show? Yeah, there is. It's called um, um, You're making Farewell and Good Night. No, it is. <laughs> it's called uh, Paul uh, Carreri and Devin Sproul, Farewell, Good Night. Good Night and Farewell. No, no, Good, good yeah. No, Thank You and Good Night. Thank You and Good Night. It's called, yes, there is, Air. <laughs> <laughs> it's called um, Thank You and Good Night, a farewell concert. We need to get a special chandelier. Well, you can talk to Danny Shea about that. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Paul Thanks, Carreri Sarah. and Devin Sproul. Thank Sproul. you so much. Cool, dude. Yay, that was fun. <laughs>